This week on Maker Update, rolling your own DO droid, a heart sculpture that checks your pulse, a handheld sniffer, a magic chef, indoor swing, furred files, and I'll explain what this is. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. I hope you and your friends and family are doing well, and whatever your situation is, I hope that this show is a welcome and entertaining distraction. Find a lot of cool stuff, so let's get started with the project of the week. On his YouTube channel, Matt Denton has a five-part video series on how he made this prop quality 3D printed remote controlled DO droid from Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. The little guy is sort of a spin-off of the BB-8 concept in the sense that it's staying upright with the use of digital gyroscopic stabilization and feedback. Matt's droid is based on an original design by Michael Baddeley. Matt's version uses the Arduino MKR family for the brains of the bot, including an MKR Wi-Fi 1010 and an MKR IMU shield that adds a 14-bit accelerometer and a 16-bit gyroscope. Finally, he tops it off with an MKR motor shield that can drive four motors and four servos. Only two of the motors can make use of the encoder and current feedback that he needs to keep the droid upright, but this particular design only needs two motors anyways. Oddly enough, the servos come in handy for providing some wiggly effects on the antennas, which is part of how this particular droid expresses himself. An Adafruit sound effects board inside handles all the blips and squeaks. It's a cool but incredibly intricate project. If you just have to make one for yourself though, Matt's series is a must watch. Plus there's a Facebook group you can join called the DO Builders Group where a lot of ideas are being exchanged. In news this week, something silly for a change. Kubo is a Japanese companion robot that debuted in 2017 with the tagline, a tailed cushion that heals your heart. Well, it seems that the world can't get enough of this headless, limbless robot cat because a smaller version, Petite Kubo, has just finished a round of wildly successful crowdfunding in Japan. It's a smaller cushion with a stubbier tail. I'm not going to pretend to tell you that I understand exactly what it does, but I know that in these lonely, isolating times, a fluffy robot companion that doesn't eat or poop or require daily walks is probably a good thing. As far as I can tell, it's only available in Japan, but if you scroll down towards the end of the crowdfunding page, you can see a few images of what's going on under the hood. I bet with a few popsicle sticks and zip ties, a continuous rotation servo, and a sacrificial stuffed animal, you could probably Frankenstein together your own triple baby. Now for a quick look at more projects. You can find links to all of them down in the description. Freeform Electronic Mastermind Jiri Prow has a new heart-shaped circuit sculpture on Instructables. He includes a 3D printed form that you can use for the brass wire. For the electronics, he's using an Arduino Nano, a LiPo battery, 9 NeoPixel LEDs, and a heart rate sensor. The idea is, when you hold your thumb to the sensor, the lights begin to blink in time with your pulse. It's a cool idea. Rabbit Creek has a guide up on how to make your own handheld air quality sensor. The design is based around an $18 Honeywell laser sensor that reports back on PM 2.5 levels. These are the fine particles and pollution that tend to get stuck in your lungs. It seems like a useful tool, but obviously the best part is the 3D printed dog nose on the front. Greg Zemwalt's Magic Chef Automata is a fun and surprisingly intricate 3D printed illusion. Inside, a concealed carousel of different dollhouse food options cycle around so that each time he lifts the lid, a new item is revealed. Aside from a six volt gear motor, some CA glue, and some small neodymium magnets, everything else is 3D printed, including the gears, bolts, cams, everything. It's incredible. On her YouTube channel, Laura Kampf shows off how she made this ingenious indoor swing. It mounts to its own frame that slots together inside a doorway. This way there's no screws, no worrying about whether or not the door frame can support the weight. It's non-destructive. Of course, you or your kids wildly swinging through a doorway introduces some potential for human destruction, so proceed with caution. Now for some tools and tips. Artist and maker guru Tom Sachs has been doing a series of profiles on his own and other people's workspaces. He's calling it ISRU or In Situ Resource Utilization. You can watch the series unfold on his Instagram. I think it's fascinating to see how other people arrange their tiny, weird, personal workspaces. Jimmy DeResta has a video up on how he made this stool using steel finger joints. It's not a practical technique for most of us since he's using a CNC plasma cutter to get the precise shapes and then going around and hammering each joint closed, but 
I've never seen anything like it, and it's a fun video to watch. On Tested, Adam Savage has been doing multiple live Q&A sessions from his shop. They've been fun to watch, especially if you're feeling a little down. They're like a one-way Skype call from your energetic maker hero. About halfway through the session, I appreciated how Adam got real about how hard it's been for him to stay motivated during this time and why he thinks that is. It really spoke to what I'm going through at the moment and maybe it will connect with you too. My lack of motivation here is coupled with all sorts of other stuff that's going on. I mean, I, you know, it's the it's the, the 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 empathy I'm feeling for the people suffering all over the country, all over the world from this corona outbreak, uh, the the fear that we all have about not being sure what the what the world's going to be like when when we move into the next phase of humanity because that's really what feels like is happening. On I Like to Make Stuff, Bob Claggett has a new video series called Shop Class where he presents tools and workshop concepts to kids. It's kid friendly, but not in a way that's annoying to watch as an adult. Kelly from the Aragami Balloon Sculpture Group, a staple of many of the flagship maker fairs, has put out a request for people to submit photos of anything they're making using the hashtag antisocial art show. It could be a thing or a drawing or a poem or a song, whatever creative thing that you might be up to Maybe something for you to do, or maybe you can check out the hashtag to get inspired. On the Cool Tools channel, Sean Michael Reagan shows his favorite set of file handles made by a German company called Ferd. They're available in three sizes on Amazon, but Sean also includes his attempt at a 3D printable version that you can print and test out. If you're feeling like we skipped the numbers since last week's show, then you probably missed Monday's Adafruit edition of Maker Update once a month. Tyler Weingartner gives the Adafruit channel its own maker update, highlighting all the awesome projects and tips and news in the Adafruit world. If you missed it, go check it out. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out the latest video going over the basics of through-hole soldering. I know you might be a pro at this stuff, but maybe your kid or your partner or your roommate is interested in giving it a try and they're looking to you for advice. Not only does this present the basics, but it's a reminder for those of us teaching someone what the common mistakes typically are. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. You can get on the Maker Update email list to get show notes emailed out to you automatically each week so you never miss a show. A big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for making this show possible. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, and I'll see you next week.